No matter what kind of fish you target, they most likely eat some form of bait fish. And if that's the case, you need to be good at throwing and fully understand the soft plastic swim bait. In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about the soft plastic paddle tail swim bait category in masterclass format from A to Z, beginner to advanced. My name's Tyler and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! Well, how's it going guys and welcome to TRF. I've got to say right now a huge thank you to all you guys. The channel has been blowing up here on YouTube and all other platforms. And the biggest way y'all can help support the TRF channel and brand besides sending these videos to your friends and family is by checking out my merch brand called Infinite Outdoors. When I set out to make a merch brand, I wanted it to have a whole different meaning than just some guy who likes to catch fish. And that's what Infinite Outdoors is. It represents the infinite amount of possibilities there are to make memories and have fun in the outdoors, as well as the faith-based side of it in my life, which is I believe in a God who loves us infinitely, uh, that he would send his son to die on the cross so we can come to know him. So that's what Infinite Outdoors is all about. It's an awesome conversation starter. I've got tons of different merch products on the website. We've got some awesome hats. We have some sweatshirts and AFCO products like the AFCO Yuri Sun Shirt. Like I said, checking out infiniteoutdoors.com is the best way to help the channel besides, of course, sending these videos to your friends because we all want to learn how to catch more fish. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about the soft plastic swim bait. The first thing I want to talk about with soft plastic swim baits is how you select the right one and and the rigging best practices. Like I said, whatever fish species you target, they eat bait fish, and so you've gotta find out to the best of your abilities what the bait fish actually are, the fish in your body of water, in your pond, in your lake, in your creek, what actual bait fish your fish are feeding on. That way you can select both the size and the color to best closely match what your fish are eating. Now the reason for wanting to be as natural of an imitator as you can is because oftentimes bait fish run in big pods, in schools, and so if the bass is chasing around bait fish or the saltwater fish or whatever, chasing around mullet, and it knows exactly what those things look like, and you throw a swim bait, a little paddle tail, that looks nothing like what it's eating, both in size and in color, the fish is most likely not going to eat it. I have seen way too many times in my own personal fishing life that I'm throwing a color, and I see the fish on my live scope. I have a fancy fish finder up there, and I can see them follow my bait, and they don't eat it. And then oftentimes, as soon as I see a bait fish in the water, maybe it, it it's floating on the top or, or a fish spit it up when I caught the fish, I can actually see what the exact color of that bait fish is. Just doing that one thing can get you more bites. Now a great question would be how thick should my swim bait be? Should it be a big thick ribbed swim bait or should it be a very thin sleek swim bait? In my experience, I love throwing the sleekest swim bait I can because most of the time bait fish are not thick wide bait fish. I think gobies maybe are the only one that I can think of that have a somewhat round body. Most bait fish look exactly like this swim bait right here, the Strike King Swim and Shiner. And so if you're picking up your first soft plastic swim bait and you don't know which one to pick, I would highly recommend this one right here. It has a great swimming action. The tail kicks, the back of the, of the body of the swim bait actually kicks. It is durable. It can hold up to multiple fish, unlike a lot of different swim baits out there. Now, up to this point, all we've talked about is the actual soft plastic paddle tail itself and picking the right one, but you're not going to catch a fish, or you know what? I shouldn't say you're not going to. A fish could hold on strong enough, but most of the time you're going to need some form of jig head, some form of hook. And when it comes to the different styles of hooks that you put on a soft plastic swim bait, there's really two main styles. There is your jig head, non-weedless swim bait head, and then there is a Texas rig, usually belly weighted, sometimes even having a blade underneath the shank of the hook. And picking one over the other totally depends on where you are fishing in the water column and how much cover or structure is around your lure. If you are retrieving a swim bait like this Strike King Rage Swimmer, a bigger size around shallow aquatic vegetation, around wood, around really sticky, snaggy stuff, you know, skipping underneath dock, you're going to have to choose some form of a weedless swim bait hook like this one right here. But if you're not fishing your swim bait around any kind of shallow, snaggy structure, even deep structure, let's say just open water, maybe a rock point or a hump, you can go with the old fashioned standard swim bait jig head. This here is the Outcast Tackle Golden Eye. I love this jig head. I'll talk about why in a second. But again, shallow cover, make sure you go weedless if you're in open water. I mean, you could go weedless if you wanted to, but if I can get away with it, I'm gonna choose a non-weedless jig head. Now, the next thing to keep in mind when selecting your swim bait jig head or your weedless hook is going to be the actual weight of it. How heavy is it? And the number one tip I can give, the best practice, is that you wanna select a weight that best keeps your swim bait in the strike zone. And I've caught multiple species of fish on a paddle tail swim bait in tons of different water depths, and so you've just gotta find on your body of water on that specific day how deep the fish you are targeting are and pick a weight that best gets the lure into 
that strike zone. So it could be 10 feet, could be 15, could be 20. It could be almost no weight to totally weightless to keep your swim bait high, high in the water column to catch fish that are cruising around the shallows. Again, it totally depends how deep you're fishing. Most of the time though, a good swim bait jig head weight is going to be one eighth or one sixteenth ounce. And when it comes to the swim bait, the, the, the weedless one, as you can see right here, that is the weight on the bottom shank of the hook. I would say this is probably an eighth. Again, if I'm throwing the weedless uh, hook right here on this bigger swim bait, I'm probably throwing it in shallower water anyway. So again, an eighth is the heaviest I'd go. Oftentimes it's sixteenth or totally weedless. And the last thing you have to consider when selecting the right hook for your soft plastic swim bait is not choosing a hook that is too long of a shank or too short of a shank. What you are seeing on your screen right here is an example of a shank of the hook that is too small for a swim bait. And just to the right, you see one that is too long for the swim bait. And here's an example of a swim bait jig head that is perfectly suited for the swim bait it's put on. But Tyler, why is it that those two were too long and too short and that one is just perfect? Well, in most cases, you want the actual shank where it starts to bend of your hook, again, both on a jig head and on a weedless, you want that shank to point out on your swim bait, again, to go from underneath to above, right where the swim bait starts to taper down. Now, this is gonna totally vary based on swim bait brand. Right here where I am pointing is where I think the bait slims down to where if I was to put the hook any farther into that swim bait, it would start to impede the actual action of not just the paddle tail, but also how the paddle tail affects the rest of the body of the swim bait from going back and forth or rolling side to side. So those right there were all the best practices for choosing the best swim bait jig head or hook for your soft plastic lure. Now I'm going to show you guys an example of how to rig both of these on, both the jig head and the weedless bait. And the biggest thing I can say, that the best practice for this part is to rig it as straight as humanly possible because bait fish, unless I guess they're somewhat injured, are not kind of swimming like this down the water column, they are swimming nice and straight. And so you want your swim bait to, again, imitate as closely as it can what the bass or whatever fish you're going for are feeding on. So let's watch right now. I'm going to line the jig head up to where the bend is going to be poking out. And I'm going to kind of notice it's about right there is where it pokes out. So that's where I'm going to know to poke the hook out. So I'm going to start putting it right down the center again, maybe looking at it from this angle to make sure it's totally straight. And then right when it gets to that point, it was supposed to poke out. I will poke it out and then slowly work that swim bait up the jig head. Again, Outcast Tackle has a great uh, bait keeper on it. And just like that, maybe give it a little bit of a pull. You have a perfectly straight rigged soft plastic swim bait that's ready to catch some fish. And the next one to rig is going to be a bigger swim bait. Again, doesn't have to be bigger, but most of the time if I'm throwing a weedless one shallow, it's the 4.8 inch size. And I'm going to be rigging it on this twist lock wide, basically an extra wide gap hook. So I'm going to line it up again to where I think the, uh, the hook's going to poke out, which is somewhere down there. Kind of keep an eye on it as I'm twisting. This here has a twist lock. Not every swim bait hook does, but I'm going to twist that soft plastic swim bait here, this Rage Swimmer, onto the top all the way till the soft plastic hits the nose of the hook. Then I'm going to find the, the area where it's supposed to poke out. I'm gonna poke it, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the swim bait down, poke this, the hook through, and then kind of bury the hook back inside the swim bait, just like Texas Freak style. And just like that, you have a weedless, soft plastic paddle tail swim bait ready to catch some fish. Now, up to this point, you could be doing everything correct, selecting the right swim bait color, the right size, the right jig head or, or weedless hook. But if you're not using the right rod, reel and line combo, you may find yourself losing fish or not even hooking them in the first place. So let's talk about which rod reel is best for what type of swim bait rigging. Unless you're throwing a very small style of weedless swim bait, I am most often throwing this one right here, this weedless paddle tail on a bait casting combo with at least 12 pound line, usually 15 to 20 pound, depending on how heavy the cover is I'm fishing around and how hard I've got to set the hook to get the fish out of the danger area. And the reason for the heavier line size and the heavier on average rod on my bait caster is because if you can see that there, that is a heavier gauge wire. It is thicker and so it takes more power, just simple math, to 
to get this hook penetrated into a fish's mouth, regardless of the species. So if you want to go weedless, you want to go big, you want to go shallow, oftentimes it's best to go with a bait caster. And for all smaller swim bait jig heads like this one that usually have a thinner on average line diameter, I'm throwing them on my finesse type tactics, which is the spinning combo. I've got 15 pound braid to a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. And again, the reason is because it doesn't take near as much power to set the hook into those fish. And you actually don't want to do that on a thin wire hook. You can oftentimes break or bend out that hook wire. And so again, because of the thin wire on this jig head, I'm usually throwing it on a spinning combo. I do throw a non-weedless bigger jig head swim bait on deep ledges over brush piles and that is using a bait caster but again the hook thickness is thicker so it could be the same style of jig head but it's much larger so therefore the hook style is larger. So now it's finally time to move on to the retrieval best practices for any kind of paddle tail swim bait and the number one thing I'll say is to go slow slow slow. I have fished all across the country at different ponds lakes and rivers probably several hundred at this point and the majority of the time the fish are biting best when you're Bait is moving slow. Now, of course, there are anomalies when the fish want to chase it, they want it going fast, but I think the best thing, at least to start first, is to start going slow with your swim bait. Here on my bass boat, I have a sonar called Live Scope. Now, this allows me to see exactly how deep my swim bait is at all times, but I understand not everybody has this technology, and even myself, I fish in my kayak, I fish in a John boat, I bank fish all the time, and this style of lure, the soft plastic paddle tail, works for everybody, not just fancy bass boat guys. So, how do you know how deep this thing is? you use the countdown method, let me teach you. If you want to find out how deep your swim bait is or how deep your body of water is, the best way is to find a predetermined length of line. Let's go with, uh, you know, five feet of line. So this right here is probably about five feet. You want to stick it on the edge of the water and then drop your rod tip and count. One, two, three, it took about three, three and a half seconds to fall five feet. And so now that I know that, I can use simple math to find out exactly how deep my body of water is by counting how long it takes for my swim bait to fall to the bottom. And if I find out what depth the fish are in, I can count my swim bait down to right where the fish are, right above their heads, and then start my retrieve. Learning the countdown method will help you in not just swim bait fishing, but every aspect of fishing. So if I was fishing this area in front of me here, I'm gonna make a cast out there. As long as it's not snaggy, I can let it get to the bottom, so two, three, four, okay, there we go, right at the bottom, about five feet deep, and I can start my retrieve. I'm gonna keep my rod tip low as I'm retrieving a swim bait. Uh, that's just the best practice that I've found, and I'm gonna reel about as slow as I can to keep that bait just above the bottom. Now, you may find I'm not getting any bites on the bottom, and so you may only wanna wait two seconds for it to fall into the middle of the column and then start your retrieve. But one of the biggest things that I can tell you guys is kind of a sneaky tip when it comes to swim bait fishing is that the closer you get to your watercraft you're fishing in or the closer you get to the bank at the end of your cast, the angle, the underneath angle will start to get smaller and smaller. So when you make a cast out there, let's say this is your plane right here and your line goes out this way. As you're retrieving it back to you, that angle starts to get less and less. Therefore, the, the angle of the, of, of the tension is pulling the swim bait up. And so on almost every cast with a swim bait, no matter if it's in a deep, clear body of water, if I'm fishing uh, the side of a, of a break wall, the edge of a dock, a, a big offshore point, I'm going to make a long cast, count it down to my desired depth, slow reel, and then as I get closer to the boat, closer to the bank, I'm going to reel even slower and slower to make sure that angle is not pulling the bait up. And the last thing we've got to talk about when it comes to paddle tail swim baits is the bite and the hook set. Now, if you are fishing this swim bait in salt water, those fish are probably going to absolutely annihilate it. So you're going to feel the bite, you're going to know it's there, and the fish is probably going to hook itself. So just kind of lean back and you got the fish. But when it comes to freshwater game fish, I'm talking your bass, your, your walleye, sometimes your pike, especially panfish, it's going to feel like a very soft tick. You're hardly even going to notice it's there, and so you don't need a strong hook set, especially with a thin diameter wire hook. You're just going to need a smooth, strong sweep of the rod, either up to the side or totally sideways, and as long as you keep up the tension throughout the fight, you're going to land almost every fish that bites your soft plastic swim bait. There he is. There he is. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Smallest one of the pack. Stinking awesome, folks. See down that clear water? These smallies do not give up. 
Well, that right there, folks, is the end of our swim bait masterclass. Hopefully, you all enjoyed. If you did, hit that subscribe button. The little paddle tail swim bait is a great way to catch bass all around the country in tons of different conditions. And if you like this video, you're going to like my drop shot masterclass I made. I will leave it linked up here in the corner, right to my left shoulder here. Give that a watch if you want to learn more about catching more bass. My name's Tyler, and we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.